He's also the lead singer in the great Allman Brothers Band. He's a guitarist, a composer, and he's really terrific. He's also a very good friend of mine, Mr. Greg Allman. In a world where celebrity families often make headlines, the strained relationship between pop icon Cher and her lesser-known son, Elijah Blue Allman, has remained largely in the shadows. Some parts of my life have been really rough, and, and so I think people were caught off guard. But why has this son, a child of music royalty, found himself distanced from the star-studded world he was born into? Has he been exiled? Or is it a self-imposed isolation? You absolutely need unconditional parental love in those, in those dark hours. We're about to delve deep into the turbulent relationship between Cher and Elijah, a journey filled with music, misunderstandings, and attempts at reconciliation. So grab your seatbelt. This is one family drama that unfolds like a gripping tale. The early years, Cher and Greg Allman's turbulent relationship and Elijah's birth. In the pantheon of rock and pop music, few couples have captured the public imagination as vividly as Cher and Greg Allman. When the two superstars crossed paths in the mid-1970s, both were at pivotal points in their careers. Cher, having established herself as a solo artist after her divorce from Sonny Bono, was ascending the ladder of pop music royalty. Greg, the soulful voice and one of the guiding lights of the Allman Brothers Band, was trying to keep his group together in the wake of his brother Dwayne Allman's untimely death. Their whirlwind relationship was a study in contrasts and contradictions. Cher was the epitome of Hollywood glamour, while Greg was a southern rock icon with a decidedly laid-back lifestyle. Yet the spark between them was undeniable. Their love story was a high-octane blend of passion and turmoil, exacerbated by their headstrong personalities and the glare of media scrutiny. They married just days after Cher's divorce from Sonny was finalized, and that impetuous decision set the stage for the roller coaster that would follow. Barely a month into their marriage, Cher filed for divorce, citing Greg's heroin and alcohol abuse. But love, or perhaps the drama of it all, kept pulling them back. They reconciled within weeks, and it was during this reconciliation period that Elijah Blue Allman was conceived. Born in July 1976, Elijah came into a world that was anything but ordinary. His parents were two of the most famous musicians of their time, and he was thrust into a life of privilege and public scrutiny from the get-go. However, the familial bliss was short-lived. Even as Elijah was taking his first steps, the fissures in Cher and Greg's relationship were becoming too significant to ignore. Greg's battles with substance abuse continued, causing a heavy strain on the couple and creating an unstable environment for Elijah. The pair eventually divorced when Elijah was just two years old and Cher was granted custody. Elijah's life became a whirlpool of nannies, tutors, and fleeting moments with his mother, who was busy juggling her career, newfound love interests, and other familial responsibilities. Greg was largely absent from Elijah's early years. His struggles with addiction and the responsibilities of his career left him disconnected from his family. The relationship between father and son was, for the most part, one of distant admiration and yearning. Elijah grew up listening to the Allman Brothers Band, idolizing the father who was more a myth than a man in his life. For Elijah, the struggle was twofold. Not only did he have to grapple with the absence of his father, but he also had to live under the towering shadow of his mother's fame. Despite Cher's best intentions, the sporadic nature of her attention left Elijah feeling like a supporting actor in the grand drama of her life. As he grew older, the complexities of his family dynamics began to weigh on him. There were questions that ached for answers and voids that no amount of material luxury could fill. Boarding school and feelings of abandonment. Elijah's formative years. As Elijah Blue Allman entered his teenage years, a new chapter began that would further shape his complex relationship with his parents and his own self-identity. <laughs> In a decision that would have lasting repercussions, he was sent off to boarding school. 
On one level, this was not unusual for children of celebrities, often entrusted to educational institutions that promised not just quality academics, but also a sanctuary from the constant media glare. However, for Elijah, this move amplified his feelings of abandonment and estrangement from his family. The boarding school was a world apart from the chaotic glamour he had grown up in. Here, discipline and schedules replaced the erratic nature of life with a superstar mother and an absent father. And while most kids might find comfort in the structured environment, Elijah felt caged. The school's hallways and dormitories were a far cry from the bright lights and adoration showered on his parents. It was as if he had been exiled from the very world to which he was born, only to be replaced by a sense of institutional coldness. Cher, constantly on tour or busy with new projects, maintained a relationship with her son that was increasingly distant. Phone calls and visits were sporadic, and her larger-than-life persona seemed to loom even larger in her absence. The mother who was a dazzling star to the world was a flickering presence in Elijah's life. Greg, still wrestling with his own demons, remained a figure more mythical than real. Elijah felt like an afterthought in their larger-than-life narratives, and the boarding school's impersonal setting only deepened these feelings. Elijah began to dive into his music and art as a means of coping. Though the school offered some solace in the form of creative expression, he still felt isolated, a sentiment exacerbated by his complicated family dynamics. The guitar strings vibrated with the unsaid, the melodies were tinged with melancholy, and the lyrics he penned spoke of a longing for something undefined. His artwork, too, reflected a darkness, as if each stroke of paint was a cry for connection. His friendship circles were small but deep. However, even in these relationships, Elijah couldn't shake off his background. To his classmates, he was still the son of Cher and Greg Allman, a label that came with its own set of expectations and judgments. Some saw him as privileged, others as a curiosity, but rarely did they see the lonely boy grappling with the absence of familial warmth. He was an enigma even to those closest to him, his true self hidden behind the walls he had erected to protect his vulnerability. As he navigated his late teens, the yearning for family became a quest for self-identity. Who was Elijah Blue Allman when separated from his famous lineage? The young man who excelled in arts and showed promising musical talent was also the conflicted teenager plagued by existential questions. With each passing year at boarding school, his feelings of abandonment mutated into a rebellious streak. This was not just teenage angst. It was a rebellion against the life he felt had been scripted for him by virtue of his birth. Music in the Blood From the moment Elijah strummed his first chord, it was clear that music was in his DNA. The son of Greg Allman, a southern rock pioneer, and Cher, a pop icon, Elijah had an almost predestined affinity for the musical arts. As with everything in his life, his journey into the world of music was complicated by the shadows cast by his famous parents. For Elijah, music was not just an inheritance, but also an escape, a language through which he could articulate his complex emotions and experiences. While the walls of his boarding school life felt constricting, the infinite possibilities of musical expression offered him a sanctuary. There was something liberating about channeling his internal tumult into his guitar, transforming abstract feelings into tangible melodies and chords. Each practice session became an act of catharsis, each performance a window into his soul. The more he played, the more he felt an organic connection to his roots. Yet at the same time, an urge to carve his own niche. The styles of Cher and Greg Allman were vastly different. One was a genre-bending diva, a chameleon adapting to the changing tides of popular music, while the other was rooted in a gritty blend of blues, rock, and country. Elijah's own style began to manifest as an eclectic fusion of these influences, punctuated by a rebellious streak that was entirely his own. While many children of famous artists struggle to step out of their parents' shadows, Elijah's challenge was twofold. He had to navigate the complexities of two distinct, colossal legacies while trying to establish his own musical identity. On one hand, his pedigree opened doors. Elijah found himself in studios and jam sessions that most aspiring musicians could only dream of, rubbing shoulders with industry giants and legendary artists. 
Yet, these opportunities also came with their own set of expectations and pressures. He often felt the weight of comparison, as though his art was constantly being measured against an invisible yardstick that bore the names of Cher and Greg Allman. It was as if he had inherited not just their talent, but also the baggage of their fame. In an industry where originality is currency, Elijah grappled with the notion that his lineage could be both an asset and a liability. He was acutely aware that he could easily ride on his parents' coattails, adopting a ready-made audience but surrendering his individuality in the process. This was a compromise he was not willing to make. Instead, he found solace in underground music scenes, exploring genres that were considered outliers in the mainstream musical landscape. It was here, in the dimly lit clubs and intimate gatherings, that he could experiment freely, far from the prying eyes that so often scrutinized him. Gradually, Elijah began to find his own voice, one that resonated with the honesty and rawness of his life experiences. His music spoke of loneliness, love, and the perennial quest for identity. But it also exuded hope, an optimistic undertone that defied the sadness of its themes. In his melodies, one could hear the echoes of his mother's versatility and his father's soulfulness, seamlessly integrated into a sound that was uniquely his. Health struggles, Elijah's battle with Lyme disease. Just when it seemed that Elijah had found his footing in the tumultuous landscape of his life, another obstacle emerged that neither fame nor musical talent could insulate him from. Health struggles, particularly his debilitating battle with Lyme disease. The insidious infection, often transmitted through a tick bite, crept into his life like an uninvited guest, wreaking havoc on his physical and mental well-being. What started as vague symptoms, fatigue, joint pain, and occasional memory lapses, soon escalated into a full-blown crisis that cast a pall over his promising music career. Diagnosis was a double-edged sword. On one hand, it offered an explanation for the mysterious symptoms that had been clouding his life. On the other, it unveiled a long, uncertain road ahead. Lyme disease is notoriously difficult to treat, often requiring a regimen of antibiotics and other therapies that can extend for months or even years. Despite the access to the best health care that his background afforded him, Elijah was plunged into a grueling medical journey that became a parallel narrative to his musical aspirations. As someone whose life was deeply entwined with music, the physical limitations imposed by Lyme disease were agonizing. He found himself unable to play for extended periods, each note becoming a laborious task. Gone were the days when music was a spontaneous act of joy. Now even picking up a guitar became a calculated decision, weighed against the looming fatigue and pain. The medications, while necessary, had their own set of side effects, nausea, dizziness, and emotional fluctuations that further complicated his daily life. More than the physical toll, however, were the emotional and psychological ramifications. The uncertainty of his condition hung over him like a dark cloud, affecting not just his professional life but also his relationships. Lyme disease is often called the great imitator for its ability to mimic other conditions, which makes it a profoundly isolating experience. Friends and family, despite their best intentions, struggled to understand the invisibility of his suffering. It was a loneliness that not even music could fully alleviate. His struggle with Lyme disease also put his career at a precarious crossroads. The industry is seldom forgiving of prolonged absences, especially for artists who are still in the process of cementing their place. Elijah had to make difficult choices about touring and recording, knowing well that every delay was a risk in the fast-paced, competitive world of music. Yet through this ordeal, he also discovered a newfound resilience and a different perspective on life and art. He began incorporating his experiences into his music, turning his battle with Lyme disease into an allegory of human struggle and survival. Instead of shying away from his condition, he started to use his platform to raise awareness about it reaching out to advocacy groups and participating in fundraisers. His ordeal became an essential part of his artistic identity, woven into the very fabric of his songs and performances. Marital Discord, the story of Elijah and Mary Angela King. The story of Elijah and Mary Angela King is one of passion, love, and ultimately discord. The initial spark between them was palpable, 
a fiery magnetism that pulled them together with the irresistible force of two stars colliding in the cosmos. Their marriage was celebrated as the union of two souls whose love for music and art seemed to mark them as kindred spirits. The world saw them as the epitome of romantic love, a perfect balance of charm, talent, and beauty. Yet as time unfolded, it became clear that even the brightest flames can succumb to the pressures of life, and their marriage was no exception. From the beginning, the challenges were evident. Elijah, already grappling with the lingering effects of Lyme disease, found it increasingly difficult to meet the demands of a marriage while juggling a strenuous career and personal health. Mary Angela, on her part, had her own career aspirations and struggled to define her identity in the looming shadow of her husband's fame and familial legacy. As both sought to navigate their individual life courses, the divergence in their paths became impossible to ignore. I think that the battle that I've gone through for the last couple years... The professional world of music and entertainment only exacerbated these fractures. Elijah's tours would often keep him away for months, widening the emotional and physical distance between them. Mary Angela found herself conflicted between her role as a supportive spouse and her own desire for professional achievement. As the distance grew, so did the misunderstandings, often erupting into disputes that neither had the emotional bandwidth to properly resolve. Ironically, their shared passion for music became a source of contention. Elijah's soulful, introspective approach to music clashed with Mary Angela's vibrant, extroverted style. The tension was palpable, not just in their personal interactions, but even in their artistic collaborations. What should have been a harmonious blending of two musical souls became a microcosm of their marital discord. Moreover, both carried the baggage of their respective families. Elijah's complicated history with his parents and the trauma of abandonment only fueled his insecurities, making him increasingly possessive and demanding. Mary Angela, hailing from a family with its own complex dynamics, found it difficult to cope with Elijah's emotional volatility. The intermingling of these familial histories added another layer of complexity to their already strained relationship. Public scrutiny made matters worse. Being part of a high-profile family meant that their marital troubles were never just their own. They became fodder for tabloids and social media gossip, exacerbating the emotional toll on both. In an age where private failures are often magnified by public judgment, the pressure was suffocating, making reconciliation even more elusive. Attempts were made to salvage the marriage, counseling sessions, temporary separations, and earnest conversations that often extended into the early hours of the morning. Yet the undercurrents were too strong, and despite their best intentions, they found themselves drifting apart, as if carried by a tide that neither could control. Divorce and reconciliation, Elijah's separation and his evolving relationship with Cher. In the midst of the turbulent waters of his divorce from Mary Angela, Another significant chapter in Elijah's life was quietly undergoing transformation, his relationship with his mother, Cher. The emotional earthquakes that had disrupted his marriage reverberated in the foundational relationship he had with her. Cher, who had been both a beacon and a puzzle in Elijah's life, now became a touchstone during this time of upheaval. It wasn't always this way. In his early years, Elijah had grappled with feelings of abandonment as he was sent off to boarding school, a choice his mother made that he never fully understood. Those years left an indelible impression on him, causing him to build walls around himself to shield against future emotional pain. In many ways, these formative experiences set the stage for the difficulties in his marriage to Mary Angela. The chasm between Elijah and Cher had widened through the years, filled with unspoken words and lingering questions. However, the act of going through his own divorce seemed to trigger a re-evaluation of the maternal bonds that had both sustained and puzzled him. Cher, for her part, had observed Elijah's struggles with his marriage and health and felt an instinctive pull to support him. She, too, was no stranger to the complexities of love and loss, having navigated her way through her own labyrinth of relationships. Witnessing her son go through the agonizing process of divorce Cher reached out in a way that she had never done before. 
As Elijah and Mary Angela went through the difficult, often messy logistics of separating lives that had been intricately entwined, he found himself in frequent conversations with Cher. Perhaps it was the shared experience of public scrutiny, the common lineage of being part of a family steeped in music and drama, or maybe it was the simple, irrefutable bond of mother and child. Whatever it was, their conversations grew richer, deeper, and more meaningful. Cher began to share stories of her own tumultuous relationships, her battles with public life, and her regrets and triumphs. Elijah found in his mother not just a world-renowned artist, but also a confidant who understood the unique challenges he faced. For Cher, these moments became opportunities to mend old wounds and to extend the maternal love that had often been veiled by her own insecurities and the demands of her career. For Elijah, this evolving relationship with Cher provided a much-needed sanctuary, a place where he could retreat to find perspective and wisdom. As he navigated the legal and emotional mazes of his divorce, Cher's newly found role in his life became a pillar of strength. It was a bitter irony that the crumbling of one significant relationship led to the rebuilding of another. However, reconciliation is never as simple as turning a page. Both Elijah and Cher had to confront the years of unspoken grievances, missed opportunities, and the mistakes they had both made. Yet it seemed that the trials of divorce had granted them both the clarity to recognize the value of salvaging their relationship, a connection woven through the intricate threads of family, music, and shared experiences. Cher's Parenting, a comparative look at Chaz and Elijah. The story of Cher as a mother unfolds like a tapestry of vivid hues, complex patterns, and unexpected turns, each thread uniquely colored by her relationship with her two children, Chaz and Elijah. While both children were born into the spotlight, the scion of a musical dynasty, their experiences growing up under the watchful eye of Cher could not have been more different. Chaz, Cher's first child with Sonny Bono, was raised in a household that often felt like a stage set, a milieu of stardom and show business. But beyond the glitter and glamour, there was a sense of normalcy, with Cher often taking on the role of the quintessential mother behind closed doors. The scrutiny around Chaz escalated when he came out as transgender and began his transition. Cher's initial struggles to understand and accept this added another layer to their complex relationship, but eventually, her support became unequivocal. On the other hand, Elijah, born of Cher's second marriage to Greg Allman, navigated a different course. Sent to boarding school at a young age, he wrestled with feelings of abandonment and grappled with the complexities of being part of a broken family. His years of self-discovery were often solitary journeys, taking him through his own set of trials and tribulations, including a battle with Lyme disease and the turbulence of his marriage to marry Angela King. Cher's involvement in Elijah's life felt sporadic, dictated by the demands of her career and her own emotional tides. These divergent experiences stem in part from the different times in Cher's life when she had her children. When Chaz was born, Cher was still a young mother trying to balance her meteoric rise to fame with the challenges of parenthood. By the time Elijah came into the picture, she was already a legend, a woman whose life had been altered irrevocably by fame and whose understanding of motherhood had been colored by her past experiences. Despite these differences, some common threads run through Cher's relationships with both her children. The most significant is her undying love for them, albeit expressed in ways that have been shaped by her own insecurities, ambitions, and the circumstances of her life. No, don't you think? Oh, you're not going to freak say. me out. Oh, that's a little scary. No, I mean, look, it's a friendly person, you know, I don't yeah. care. The world may focus on Cher as an iconic figure, but for Chaz and Elijah, she is a deeply flawed yet fiercely loving mother. Cher's individual relationships with Chaz and Elijah also reflect the broader societal transformations concerning family, identity, and celebrity. As Chaz's transition made headlines, Cher found herself in the midst of a cultural awakening around transgender issues. Her very public journey from ignorance to acceptance mirrored a larger societal shift. Meanwhile, her evolving relationship with Elijah bore witness to the changing norms of what constitutes family especially as they weathered the storms of his health issues and marital struggles. As Chaz and Elijah continue to navigate their own lives, their relationships with Cher evolve. Chaz has become an advocate, 
using his platform to talk openly about LGBTQ plus issues, thereby deepening the channels of communication with his mother. Elijah, for his part, has rediscovered the maternal bond through the trials of his marriage and his own personal struggles. In both cases, the lessons they've learned and the love they've received from their iconic mother have been instrumental in shaping their own identities.